In this video, we're going to discuss parenting and grouping. Parenting is the action of placing objects into an organized group. The leader is the parent, and its followers are the children. In my scene here, I have a sphere and two cubes. I want to take both of these cubes and make them children of my sphere. To begin, I'll click on my first cube and then hold Shift and click the second cube. This allows me to select multiple objects. I'm going to then hold Shift again and click on the sphere. Now I have three separate objects selected, and they're selected in the order that I chose them. You can also tell the selection order by their coloring. The object that was last selected is current and colored with a green wireframe, while the previous objects all turn white. With all three objects selected, I can now parent them. And the object that I selected last, the sphere, will become the parent of the objects I selected first, my two cubes. To parent these, I'll choose Edit, and go all the way down to the bottom of the menu and choose Parent. The cubes are now children of my sphere. Now, when I go and move the sphere, all of the children will move along with it. We can move, rotate, or scale and see the effects of the parent-child relationship. To unparent, I'll select a single object and choose Edit, Unparent. Now when I select the sphere, that first cube is no longer affected. To parent that back up, I can just select the cube and hold shift and select the sphere. I do not need to select the other cube since it's already a child of my sphere. And we'll choose Edit, Parent. And now once again, both cubes are children of the sphere. We also have hotkeys that allow us to quickly parent or unparent nodes. If I take the cube, just select it, and choose Shift and P, the cube will become unparented from the selection. To parent that back up, I'll select the cube, hold Shift and select the sphere, and then just choose P. And that will parent that cube back to the sphere. Children automatically adopt the parent's transforms. Now currently all of our transforms are in the default position and they're set to zero. But let's take the cube, unparent, I'll choose Shift P with the cube selected, that unparents. Then I'll select my sphere. Let's just rotate this just to give it a bunch of values there. And we'll translate it a little bit too to add some values to it. In this new position, I'll take my cube and parent it back to the sphere. I'll select in that order the small cube, then the sphere, and choose P, the hotkey, to parent those back up again. And now when I select the cube, you can see that it has taken on all of the values that the sphere had. And those values were added to the current values of the cube. Let's undo that and just bring it back to its original position. And I'm going to unparent the large cube and leave these all separate. And let's take a look at another option we have called grouping. Now grouping is identical to parenting with the exception that when you create a group, you're also creating an additional node. So I'm gonna select all of the objects here and the order doesn't matter nearly as much because we're going to take all of these objects regardless of their selection order and place them under a new node. So we could just draw a marquee around all of that or individually click them. And I'll choose Edit, Group. And now they're placed into their own group. Now the group node was also created and shows up here in the channel box. Group nodes do not have any renderable geometry. We can see that they do get a manipulator, 
but nothing else is there. Group nodes are created in the center of the world. And like with any node, we can change that pivot point in order to alter the way it affects or is affected by transforms. So if I hit insert, I enter into pivot point mode, I can grab the group nodes pivot and relocate it. Since group nodes do not have any geometry or icon associated with it, the manipulator just comes right with it. Group nodes are a great way to organize your scenes. Since they contain no geometry, they don't occupy any of our real estate within our perspective view. Now at any point in time, whether it's parented or grouped, we can always take an individual object of that group and move it independently. If I want to get to the top of this parent-child relationship, I can choose the up arrow on the keyboard. That will take me all the way to the top, and you can now see that my group node is selected. Let's break these objects out of the group, and we'll just choose Shift P with all of those nodes selected. And I'm going to parent each of these to each other. So I'll select the cube, then the sphere, parent that. Then I'll select the sphere. Notice that the cube also highlights there because it is a child of the sphere. Then I'll select the larger cube and parent the sphere to it. Now each of these are a child of the other, basically creating a tree-like structure. If I move the sphere, only the second cube or smaller cube will move. This object here is my parent. Everything underneath it will move. And if I want to traverse this hierarchy, I can select the very last one there and choose my up arrow, and it will go up the chain. We can also choose the down arrow, which will only select my top node.